Okay, we are ready to begin the process of thinking about a topic for our research project or a research question. Uh, there is no expectation at this point that we're going to make a decision today that is permanent or locks us into one way of working for the rest of the year, but this will start the process of helping us narrow down the multitude of ideas we may have and make this into a workable process that starts with the generation of an idea and results in a fully actualized research project. How are we going to go about doing that today? It's very simple. We're going to use uh, just a simple thinking map idea. We're going to use a circle map today to try to generate some ideas based off of the idea that each and every one of us probably has a favorite subject that we have studied in school or a favorite discipline, something that we are most closely aligned with. I know as a former history teacher, for me, that discipline is history. That's what I find to be fascinating. But I know for many of my students, they're not really interested in history, but they're really fascinated by science or the very rare few that are interested in math. Or let's not forget the arts are a very rich area where we could do some research. So we're going to start off today very simply by identifying a discipline that we have a personal interest in. Uh, this could be something that you want to study further on in college. So you know you want to go into that particular field. And so you want to do research that might help you move forward in that area. Or it might just be an area of personal curiosity. I've had students that have done projects based around microbiology because that's what they want to study. And kids who have done it on video games and comic books, even though they're never going to study those again, they just wanted to spend time on that subject because it was really interesting to them. So today we're going to start with a discipline. We're going to look at the arts, the humanities, science, math, and then you might narrow it down just a little bit more if you want to. If you have a specific area, maybe you're more interested in biology versus physics, but we're going to pick a discipline. Now remember, this is not a permanent choice. You could decide next week that you want to go in a different direction. But for right now, we're just starting the thought process so we understand how do we go from just identifying a discipline to developing a research question. Our next step will be outside of the smaller circle where we will write down the title of our discipline. We're going to try and list as many related topics as possible. This is just simple word association and those responses will go here in the larger circle. Right here, I'm just going to write my discipline. As I said, for my example, it would be history, or if I wanted to be more specific, U.S. cultural history. And then in this outside box, I would just start writing down as many terms as I possibly could of topics that might be interesting to me. I might write civil rights or 1950s teen culture. I might look at Revolutionary War, just anything that was interesting to me based on my love of that particular discipline. And so I could have as many uh, terms or subjects or topics written here in this larger circle as possible. This could take longer for some of you, but I would spend at least five minutes just free association, just listing as many topics as you possibly could. Once you have a good range of topics there, now let's take a highlighter and let's go back and identify the five topics which you are most interested in at this time. Once again, we are not making permanent decisions right now. We're just simply practicing a process. This is a process that we may need to revisit later. So let's just practice it right now. But for today, we're going to highlight the five topics which you are most interested in at that time. So you ask, how do I know I'm most interested? Just look at the list, say the terms out loud or discuss the terms with somebody sitting next to you and the ones that you that that resonate with you. And you'll know what that is. I don't know how to explain to you what that process would be, but you'll know if you're interested or not. So choose five. Let's rank five topics for today, knowing we might expand this list at a later date. Then we're going to flip the paper over and I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment and start creating lists of possible questions for each of the five topics that you've already identified. So remember, just to review, here in the center, I'll identify one discipline 
Now you can do this for multiple disciplines if you wanted, but for each and every one, we're gonna draw one small circle that identifies that particular discipline. And then we're gonna do the free association and think of as many topics uh, as we can. If we can think of it, that means it's something that might be interesting to us. So we're already moving into our own personal interests. Then we're going to go to step C and we're gonna use a highlighter to identify the five topics which we believe are the most interesting at this particular moment. And then we're gonna flip the paper over. Now here on the back is where we start creating possible research questions, possible. We are not making permanent decisions right now. Keep that in mind. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna list topic number one. Now remember, instead of writing topic number one, Going back to my example of history, maybe this would be 1950s teen culture. And then right below that, I would start writing down as many questions as I could think of related to that subject. Uh, what was it like to be a black teenager in the 1950s? What was it like to be a female teenager in the 1950s? What was it like to be an affluent teen in the 1950s? What was it like to be a poor teen in the 1950s? I could just keep doing this over and over and over again. Now for the examples for each of the topics, you'll see that I've identified five. Five would indicate that you were engaged with the activity and you were practicing it and your brain was thinking of generating questions, but five is not a limit, it's just a minimum to indicate that you are practicing this process. You could have as many as possible and you may need to add on another piece of paper because you might find as you go through this process, as you start to get more interested, you might come up with more and more questions. Remember, we're just practicing making research questions. We're not evaluating the questions. We're not going back through the criteria of a good research question that we learned in AP seminar. We're just practicing thinking of questions at this point. Question development will come later in this process, but for today, we're just trying to write as many questions as we can about these five topics. We're practicing question creation. Question development is another lesson. Hopefully by the end of this, we have at least 25 possible questions. I'm gonna guess that each and every one of you will have significantly more than 25 but you'll at least have these ideas roaming around in your brain. And so in between this class and the next class, you'll start thinking about these things and you'll start having conversations with the other research students. And it might be that you start looking into some of these topics and you wanna do a Google search and say, oh, is there anything about being a poor teen in the 1950s? What do we know about that? And it's just starting the process. This is nowhere near developing a research question. This is just starting our brains on this investigation and starting a process that will lead us to a finished product in April. I hope this helps.